Hey guys, welcome back to my weekly videos. If you've never been to my page before, my name is Sarah and I make videos on faith-based content, self-development, life advice, and I just come on here and share my thoughts and feelings with you guys. So as some of you know, I got married three weeks ago, so thank you so much for your congrats and all of your sweet messages. And I moved to Vancouver two weeks ago. So my husband and I have just been settling in and he helped me to set up this temporary setup and we lost all of our lighting. But yeah, I haven't made a video in four weeks, so I wanted to come on here and start making videos again. And in the future, I would like to have, in the near future, I would like to have Adam join me on my videos. So for this video for today, I just wanted to share with you guys something hopefully thought provoking or healing in some way. And that is the idea that we will be happier as single people. So the reason I wanted to share this is because this is something that I believed for a little while in my life for a couple years and I wanted to share with you guys um, just a couple reasons why some of us believe that we will be happier as single people and how that can really also hinder us from what God has for us and yeah this is an accumulation of what I've experienced things that I've seen heard and experienced from people around me and so in no particular order I'm just going to jump into it so the first one is that a lot of us believe that we will be happier as single people because we feel a lot more confident and we feel better about ourselves. This is my personal experience. As a single person, you can feel a lot more confident and a lot better about yourself, but that is temporary. And the reason why is because we don't have to um, face ourselves as much. So when we're in a relationship, there is like a magnifying glass that is put on our insecurities, on our bad habits, on our flaws. And it's like, they all start coming out when we're in a relationship. Whereas when we're single, we're, it's kind of protecting ourselves in a way from having to deal with a lot of that. Because when we get into a relationship, we two people come together, they both have their suitcases, their baggage of things from the past, their um, past like fil the filters that they see life through, um, beliefs, scarring, so many different things. We come into the relationship and now all of a sudden all of these issues start coming out when for the most part they're normally just they're usually just individual issues that are now becoming a relationship issue or a marital issue. So yes, for a period of time, it is easier sometimes to be single because we don't have to face a lot of those things. But um, at the end of the day, I really believe that if marriage is something that God has for us, for people listening, then um, ultimately singleness won't be the most fulfilling if God has marriage for you. Another part of that is I do feel like society, whether directly or indirectly, sometimes uh, glorifies being single. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being sing single either, but it can glorify it almost like saying that you will get more done, uh, like you'll be more of like a hustler, independent, a boss, like that type of thing, like a, you know, just keep doing your own thing. Which again, I used to believe for a period of time, um, because I, yeah, I used to believe that for a period of time as well, that I will get more done, I will accomplish more as a single person, which again can be deceiving because that can be true, but at the same time, the Bible also says that one, one person can put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And so I really believe that if it's the right relationship that God has for you, and he's brought you together with this person, then really you're gonna come together and collaborate and get way more done. Now, the other part of it is something that I believe a lot of us do to protect our own hearts, and this is something that I have done as well. And that is that if we desire a relationship, marriage, to have kids, a happy relationship, whatever it is, a lot of the times because of past experiences of being hurt, and we do not want to have an ex, we don't want to get our hopes up, we don't want to have an expectation of being happy in our marriage or of having a good relationship or having a relationship at all or having kids or having any of these desires of our hearts met because it's scary to be disappointed again. And so sometimes, actually a lot of the time, it's not even something conscious, it's actually something subconscious that we don't even know that that desire is there. And so we say like, yeah, I'm honestly just happy you're single. And trust me, I've said that as well. And again, I'm not saying that that's not true for some people, but this is just to provide some insight and to be thought provoking in case this stirs up something in your heart. So sometimes it's just easier to say that's not something that we want when in reality, we're just really, really afraid of being disappointed again. And I just wanted to share with you guys two examples of this 
within relationships. And that is one, when I first started dating Adam, which was not a long time ago, but there was a desire in my heart that I didn't even know was there that I wanted to be asked out officially on a date. And I think it's just because in the past with like, like our culture with dating, things could just be very casual and there would be like no official like date type of thing. So I think I let that desire just like die in my heart. And then um, he asked me officially on a Zoom date and like brought flowers and he's like bring a tea and stuff like that. And I just felt this part of my heart soften because I didn't even realize, I didn't even remember until it was triggered that like, oh my gosh, that is actually what my heart wanted. But I allowed myself to think that it's not something that I desired anymore because I was afraid of being disappointed if I didn't get it. So when we first started talking and I wanted to be officially asked on a date, I, I didn't expect it and I, and I kind of tried to just like push it aside. But God put it on Adam's heart and impressed on him, remember to ask her on an official date. The second part of it, or just another example, is even with our proposal. So because things happen so quickly, I did not expect to be officially proposed. Well, I did expect to be officially proposed to, but I didn't expect to have like a beautiful proposal just because he was in Vancouver and I was in Toronto and we were getting married very quickly. So I was thinking like, that's a lot of pressure and um, how is he, you know, gonna, it's just too much and it's not possible. So in my heart, um, I, I did desire a proper proposal, a nice proposal, but it's something that I kind of just like pushed, pushed down or didn't even know was there because I was afraid to be disappointed if I didn't get one. And, um, but yeah, and then Adam ended up flying to Toronto secretly. He surprised me. My parents and my family were in on it. Um, I came home like late from shopping with my mom and he had set up uh, in my backyard all of these lights and roses and like a camera and he had an, like this like, beautiful proposal for me and I just felt another part of my heart just like, oh my gosh, like break down in a good way. Like my heart just softened because I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I wanted. But I was afraid of wanting it because I was afraid of being disappointed. And so God knows all of the desires of our heart, even when we have forgotten them. And that's the same with relationships as well. If you're in a relationship or a marriage where you're not happy and you're feeling like settling, I just wanted to encourage you that um, I wanted to encourage you to give those desires to God and to pray on it because he has not forgotten the desires of your heart. He knows that they are there. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to say whether it's relationships or a job or just a lifestyle or whatever it is, God knows the desires of our hearts and he has not forgotten about them. And so if we give it to him and we wait on his gifts, um, we wait on his blessings for us, then we're not going to be disappointed. Okay, so with that being said, I just wanted to pray for whoever's listening right now in this area. You can pray along with me, you can agree in prayer, you can bow your head, you can close your eyes, whatever you'd like to do. But it is very powerful when we come together and we pray together. So if you wanna agree with me right now, Dear Heavenly Father, I just lift up every single person under the sound of my voice right now. Lord, you know all the deepest desires of their hearts if there's areas that they were disappointed in, that they have experienced pain in, that they're afraid to hope again, Lord, any areas that they're waiting on marriage or waiting on their relationship to be fixed, their marriage to, to be fixed, relationships to come back together, um, a job, anything like that, Lord, I just ask that you give them a peace right now. And I ask you, Lord, that you give them the strength to hand that over to you. We just hand all those desires over to you, Lord, and we trust you with them. And we ask you to help them to come to pass and to do the work in us um, to prepare us to be ready for these things, to prepare us to be ready for a relationship, to prepare us to be ready for whatever it is that you have for us. So we just give that to you, Lord. We trust you with it. We ask you for a peace in the meantime, and we ask you for healing. We ask you to heal um, every single person's heart who is listening right now from the pain of disappointment and to know that um, you give good gifts and that you desire to bless us and you just need us to trust you. So we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, then please share it with someone. And if you haven't visited my coaching website yet, it is nowbloom.life and I offer virtual coaching one-on-one -on -one if you wanna check that out. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon. Ah.